Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Europatient Podcast, where we meet every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. to discuss urology topics. I'm your host, Vic Sinise, and I'm a registered nurse that's been working in urology for the past 40 years. If this is your first time checking out our program, be sure to go to our website at europatient.com to learn more about the show. So we're going to go right into our episode, and this week we're going to be discussing how a cystoscopy is done. Pretty interesting stuff. So let's start out with uh, actually why a cystoscopy is done. What's the reason that we would even do one? Well, if we found blood in the urine, frequent urinary tract infections, leakage of urine, painful urination, or maybe there was an abnormal finding on one of your studies, a CAT scan or an ultrasound, these would all be indications to order a cystoscopy. Now, you might be surprised. Sometimes we'll do it the very day you come in for your initial consultation. Sometimes we'll be scheduling it at a different time, but it's often done in the office. As always, we're going to go through those 5-H questions with you. How is it done? How much will it hurt? How long will it take? How long is the recovery? And how well does it work? So let's kind of talk about how it's done. So a cystoscopy is a thin instrument that's placed through the urethra to examine the bladder and the urethra. Now there's two examples of it. This one over here, which is what we call a flexible cystoscope, and it can bend and it uses fiber optics to visualize. Um, this part here is where the doctor looks through to take a look at the bladder. This is used to fill the bladder with water. Over here, we have a rigid cystoscope. This was the oldest version of how we used to look in the bladder, and it doesn't bend. It's a lens instrument, so glass lenses. It does not flex at all, and this was uh, is still used today. There are certain procedures that we cannot do with uh, a flexible scope that we have to use a rigid scope for. Now, here's an example of a doctor using a rigid scope. As you can kind of see, you kind of have to stretch out um, the curves here, and we'll go in a little more detail how we're built on the inside. For men, that makes the rigid a little bit more difficult. And this is what it looks like when you're looking down through that scope. So that's the urethral channel we're looking right in, and you can examine all the walls. So you really get a good view. Now, this is an example of that flexible scope. As you can see, that's the flexible scope that they're using. And uh, most of the time nowadays, most of these are hooked up to video scopes. So we can actually watch on this monitor and patients, as you can see, this guy is just watching his uh, cystoscopy going on. It kind of takes your mind off of things and it's interesting to watch. Um, and the, most of the urologists like to not have to have such a bird's eye view anymore to have their face right up against the scope like that. So most are doing video scopes, but sometimes we still go back to the old scope system, depending on what we're doing and what we need to do. Again, how is it done? So if you're a female or if you're having a rigid scope, you're probably going to be using this table over here. And these are called knee stirrups or knee crutches. And that's what kind of supports your legs in a bent fashion so that there's access to get to your urethra. Now, if you're a male patient and we're doing flexible, often the doctor can just have you laying flat on a table, any table to do it. It's very simple. So those are the how we do it. Now, if you see something that looks like a IV bottle, don't get nervous. It's not an IV. It's actually a bag of fluid that we use to put a little bit of fluid in the bladder because normally the bladder would be collapsed and you want to open it up a little bit so you can see all the surfaces. So you want to put a little bit in. Now, it's not going to be uncomfortable. We're not going to put so much into your bladder that it will be uncomfortable for you. But don't get nervous. That's not an IV. Now, again, as I mentioned earlier, this is what it looks like for a men. We have what I kind of call the S-curve right here. And this is where the scope is passed. And that S-curve is much easier to negotiate with a flexible scope, as you can see here, than it would be with a rigid scope where things have to be stretched out. This is an example of the rigid scope. So you see the S curve is gone because the scope actually has to flatten it. Now, I promise you that this may sound like it's a much worse procedure, but in the talented hands of a urologist, they are so used to being able to get the scope to go in that they know just how to bend, turn, twist to make that slide in there pretty easily. So even the rigid is not terrible. Now, this is a female scope. So whether you go in with rigid or with the flexible, it's a straight shot pretty much for a woman. So it's not negotiating all those curves. So you ask yourself, well, how much is it going to hurt? We always like to mention that on a scale of one to 10, 10 being bad, one, nothing. Um, if it's rigid, I would put it up at about a four or five. You know, it's going to be a little uncomfortable. There's no question about it. If it's a flexible scope, 
two or three, maybe even a one. It really should not be a painful procedure. And it's not a procedure that, you know, you need to be knocked out for. It's so uncomfortable. But there are options um, if you have a lot of discomfort. You, if your doctor offers it, actually get a local anesthetic. And that's done without a needle. As you see right here, I'm inserting this um, jelly that has some Novocaine or lidocaine actually in it and just uh, numbs up the inside channel. So that can be placed ahead of time. Um, check with your, your physician to see if they offer that. Very simple to do, and it's almost painless to have that. I say it works like the numbing stuff you put on your gums when you go to the dental office. How long does it take? Is this a long procedure? Heck no. Most of them can be done in two to five minutes. Can it sometimes take longer? Yeah, sometimes they'll look get a better look, but it's generally this is a very fast procedure. How long is the recovery? Oh, it's pretty much, I'd say 24 to 48 hours max that you're going to have some discomfort. And I'm talking mild burning, temporary urgency. Um, you may feel like you have to urinate more frequently. That's very common. But as soon as the scope comes out, for the most part, you're going to feel a lot better. Do you need an antibiotic afterwards? Well, you know, the uh, evidence doesn't really say that for a simple cystoscopy that you have to have an antibiotic. So if your doctor doesn't give you one, don't panic. They're going on good research. Now, your physician will best determine whether you should have an antibiotic after a procedure. Some people are at higher risk and would make sense to treat. So again, leave it up to your physician to decide. This other product over here, Azo is an over-the-counter product. So if you do get home and you feel like you have a lot of burning and you want something to try to help that discomfort, go ahead and see if you can uh, pick that up at the pharmacy. Check with your pharmacist to make sure there's no contraindication with any of the medications that you're currently on. We always want to know how well does it work. When we're talking about how well something works, we look at two things, sensitivity and specificity. Sensitivity means does it work very well? Is this something that can detect really tiny things. And yes, we can see with the scope, many of these small little tumors are very easy to see. Specificity means if we see something that looks like a tumor, is it actually a tumor? Is it a cancer? And how specific it is. It is. Now it's not as specific as it is sensitive, but it's still pretty specific as you can see anywhere from 64% to 100%. So it's a, um, a, a good test for how well does it work. Here's a little example of what we're looking at. So as we look at a bladder here, this thing right here that arrow is pointing to, that's a bladder tumor. So that's what we would be uh, looking for. Over here on this side, we see these things that look like a, a bag of eggs or something in there. Those are stones, bladder stones. And that usually forms when a patient has an obstructing prostate, those things can form. Here's another uh, um, interesting view. This little thing here is the ureter. That's the ureter coming in from the kidney into the bladder. And what they watch for is they can actually see it looks almost like smoke coming out of here. Um, and that's the jet of urine to make sure that the kidney's putting out urine. Also, sometimes you come in with blood in the urine, you don't see anything in the bladder, but you see one of the ureter jets out some blood. So you know that that kidney is the one that's the culprit. Now over here, this is looking through the urethra at a man's prostate. Those are the lobes of the prostate. Kind of call sometimes refer to this as kissing lobes. As you see, they kind of meet together. And when we talk about obstructing prostate, that's what we mean. As always, I have a handout for you. Go to the website at uropatient.com and click the handouts and you'll be able to get this one on cystoscopy. Now, I didn't produce this one. I'm a uh, longtime member of the SUNA organization, which is the Society of Urologic Nurses and Associates. And uh, I've actually been one of their past presidents. So they produce a lot of great patient education. And I always say, why recreate the wheel if somebody's done a good job? So nod to them. Go ahead and download their um, handout right from our site. So don't be afraid of coming in to have a cystoscopy. The urologist really is your friend. Their talent is, is you know, with using these scopes is ma what makes it so comfortable. So you're in good hands with your local urologist taking care of you for this procedure. With that, we're going to go on and just talk about what's our coming for next week. So next week, I'm going to be discussing what a stent is. That's this little thing you see here in the x-ray. What is that? What's it for? What's it done? How does it hurt? How much does it hurt? All those good questions. The five H's will be answering those. So thanks again for joining us on the Euro Patient Podcast. It's been a, my pleasure to, to 
be a part of your education. And if you have any questions, be sure to join our Facebook group and ask them on the Facebook group. And we'll see you next week.